वेलकम एवरीबडी गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्ते वी कैन स्टार्ट द मॉर्निंग सेशन सो वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द सेल्फ एंड द बॉडी एंड हाउ द द सेल्फ इज द वन दैट इज सेंट्रल in my existence as a human being between the self and the body the self is the one that is central and the body is a tool that i am using as an instrument for my purpose so um with this discussion that we had we had um, asked everybody to um do this self reflection about um that in all your activities throughout the day yesterday we were to try and observe what was happening in the body and what was happening in the self and ultimately who was deciding who was concluding things deducing things who was instructing was it the body or the self who was understanding things was it the body or was it the self ji ji so we are already you know if you say how to see the self isn't it we are ji. already seeing the self in the form of the activities that are going on within us isn't it ji ji so when we are trying to see the activities within us when we are trying to see the thoughts the feelings like you said you were able to notice the emotions the feelings so all of that is happening within me isn't it ji didi we are not using the eyes but we are still seeing ji so that is um what i'm trying to say is we are already seeing okay self. okay ji 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 there is a part of you that is observing the thought the feelings isn't it ji so that is also you so ji in a way now we can see how we can observe within without the use of the physical eyes even if your eyes are closed but we'll do yeah um i suppose that is one way of looking at it essentially um you know what we keep saying as a material unit the material units do have recognition and fulfillment in them so you can see it as this that the unit whichever the material unit it recognizes other units it recognizes its relationship with the other units and it fulfills that relationship in a very definite manner it doesn't have choice in that essentially that's the same thing you are saying but i'm just using little different words yes so and that is right because um you know we have already talked about this that the when it comes to the body the you know the body in the human being is a more complex version you can say of the body or the you know the bio order but the whole decision making process you know by the self once the consciousness unit associates with this body 
then that whole process changes because now I am giving direction to the body. I am deciding, I am choosing. So yes, when we have that, uh, when we are able to see that clearly, then we can also see our role, our responsibility with the body. And that if I am clear about my purpose, then I do take responsibility to take care of the body so that I, it can aid me in my purpose. Yes. So, you know, when you are showing association, um, probably it's easier to do the study or to show in the study. But if you are saying as a reason for it, then it becomes more difficult to show because there can be so many confounding variables, no? There can be so many other factors associated with it. So, um, certainly many studies have been done, but particularly um, if you are going to show longevity as a result of this, then you have to show it like a prospective study of a long duration. So, it will be, it will take a long time. But what can be shown in uh, less time is the association of this with well-being. So, longevity will take long time, no? To see that. Yes, yes. Other, other things, we are working on them. Hmm. These kind of projects are open, some of them. Yes. That we are looking at uh, the impact on well-being and so on. Yes. Um, there is also, um, um, you know, a study done or, you know, work done on people who are living long lives and their, um, you know, interviews with them and seeing what they do, how they live their life and what is it that makes them live long lives. And that has been documented in this book called Ikigai. Ikigai, yeah, yeah. I have yeah. Read I mentioned that earlier also. Yes. So there, one of the things that they have been able to show association of longevity with is some some purpose. And yeah. when the fee, when, you know, and you can see this also that we are constantly desiring something, feeling something, desiring something. And so that is what drives you, what keeps your, you know, um, you know, why you're living or what motivation. You want. Uh, why we are, why am I alive or why should I live on motivation? But, yes. um, and this also was shown in the Ikigai study that uh, hmm. people who do have relationships or they are, you know, interacting with others socially, other human beings. Um, there were many associated factors, like they all tend to wake up early, they all tend to be active outside and so many other things. They all tend to eat less, many factors uh, which yes. they could show association with. But since um, separately, I think as the consciousness and the body and taking responsibility for the body, those uh, kind of studies I am not aware of because a lot of times, you know, I don't know of many um, references to the consciousness by itself. Mm. But certainly, you know, um, that can be done and... Um, at least that association can be shown and we are trying to work on some of those things. Yes. Yes, really. At this <laughs> point, you know, that we must um, be unconsciously or without awareness, a lot of times we are thinking of ourselves as something different from the self. The yes, self is yes. telling us, the self is doing this. Who is the yes. self? Isn't it? That yeah. we must 
ट्राई टू सी फॉर आर सेल्फ ट्रूथ इट बट डेफिनेटली दैट इम्पैक्ट इज विद इन आर सेन uh like with respect to it only we are uh, if we are saying the physical form is doing something or something it's only even our emotions is with respect to our consciousness only mm-hmm. so once we are controlling that our emotions are under control else with respect to whatever we see like uh, we immediately react without any thought process so that calmness without that harmony any- thought process or without any awareness of the thought process uh like actually like uh, i'll tell you one thing like i've seen the students uh, playing around outside the classroom uh like i just uh, saw them then i went and said like what is the reason you are playing outside then they said we are a bit late so our faculty did not uh, allow us inside so if it would have been my earlier uh, isha then i would have just banged them <laughs> shouted at them without uh, what is this you are doing and all but first i i thought like i should ask the reason then i went and spoke with the faculty what is the reason then it was like there is a different state of handling the complete situation rather than uh, reacting uh, over reacting i can say that overestimating the situation so things were in a proper place i could feel that so mm-hmm. this is something uh, i could make it a difference within myself yeah. so even that like uh, definitely you know once you start paying attention you can see many things within yourself yes. no? many thoughts many feelings yes um, changing from moment to moment and so on yeah, so it's earlier, like always we were yeah. also the thoughts were there one day mm. but we were not aware of them we were not paying attention to them true true so many activities we have done and may still be doing mm. without awareness of the thoughts and the feelings behind it but when we start paying attention then we can see that thought process behind it yeah and first thing is we never talk to ourselves but that process of talking to ourselves also begins this is what i have observed yeah the dialogue within yes 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 yeah. didi yeah thank you didi thank you a lot of times we may be having lot of dialogue within which we are not paying attention to like for instance you know somewhere i am thinking should i go here should i not go there you will find that always you have two choices isn't it to go or not to go to do yes, or not to yes and yes. so on so that process the thought process you know it's there now it must have been there earlier also we were probably not aware of it then we weren't paying attention to it so it looked like everything is happening spontaneously automatically mm. but when we start paying attention we are able to see this yes the thought yes, process okay. behind the feeling behind the activities that we are doing isn't it yes didi yes yeah thank you okay. so see when we have if we don't have happiness within us obviously we are going to look for it outside isn't it mm. if i am not feeling happy within simple example that we keep giving no that um you may notice this within yourself perhaps many people you know um share things like this that when you are disturbed or when you are um, agitated you tend to do things a little bit differently like for instance you may um um one is that you will start looking for something outside to try to satisfy you because you are not able to see this within yourself isn't it 
So you are looking at the outcome of things. That the same thing that we were discussing a couple of days back. That when you are looking outside at the outcome, when this happens, then I'll be happy. This is what you are basically telling yourself, isn't it? That if this happens correctly, then I will be happy. So now you can see when you don't have that happiness within you, you are constantly postponing this to some event in the future. That if this happens correctly, then I will be happy. And if that job or that task is done correctly, how long do you stay happy with that? For how long? You'll notice that it is very momentary. Then the next problem comes up. When that gets done, then I will be happy. Isn't it? This is what we keep doing. Just like catching up. <laughs> yeah. So we keep doing this because we are not able to see that happiness within. And we keep thinking that this is going to come from outside. So if somebody is making noise and I don't think they should make noise, now I am unhappy. So if we see this, even the happiness that you get from this, if we could see that how momentary it is. And the very next moment, I am already ready with so many other problems that should become resolved outside before I can be happy. So when will I be happy then? You know, it's hardly, it's in very small bits here and there for very um, short duration. But that is not what I want. So if I see what I really want, and I want to be happy in continuity, then this answer is obviously not outside, isn't it? Because it's not working. We've been trying it for a long time. It's not working. Right. So now if you start paying attention inside, the important thing is, as we pay attention, and when we do the exercises, we pay more attention, um, you know, and spend time on each point, like, you know. So, um, when we are paying attention to what is happening inside, then we will be slowly able to observe the thoughts inside. As we keep paying attention, we will also be able to observe the feeling inside. And then when we see that this feeling is not naturally acceptable to me, we will also be able to have that right feeling. And that duration can be longer. But like you are mentioning, until and unless I am able to sustain that feeling, of course it will keep changing. Because again I am looking outside. So somewhere um, you know, I lose attention inside. And again I am driven outside. So I start looking outside and again I see, okay, this is, you know, not okay outside and it should be okay and this should be okay and so on. But ultimately, you know, how much am I going to change because in my daily day-to-day -day interaction, I am interacting with so many other human beings. I am interacting with so many other things and so much outside may not be happening the way I think it should. Ultimately, trying to work that out is something, uh, you know, you, you become highly disturbed because your whole outlook is that everything outside should be fine. I'm not saying you personally, I'm just saying I, that. I, I, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. Yes. But so, the thing is, um, it, it, it is like that. As we attention inside, then hmm. we become more, you know, our competence grows and we are able to, and you will get this from many sharings, uh, people who have shared. I think you yourself have also seen some difference lot of there is an internal compass it is getting better day by day yes but like we say, keep saying you know it's a long journey it takes time yeah so, ganesh bhai also told it will take 10 years i'm waiting for that 10 years <laughs> <laughs> again you are postponing the happiness <laughs> no no i'm growing up i'm growing uh, that, that it's not i'm postponing it to 10 years okay i'm <laughs> I am in the journey and uh, I expect to at least complete by 10 years. <laughs> there will be Again, boosters. If we put a condition on it, then if that condition is not met, we are going to be unhappy. 
See? Yeah, very correct. Uh, so very correct. it's like if you have to climb a mountain, one way is to keep walking step by step and thinking, oh, how far it is and how long it will take and when will I get there and all of that. And you can see how frustrating or tragedy it may seem like. And the other can be that you keep running up and saying, when we reach, we reach. But let me enjoy these flowers are there. Yeah, so we it. have been saying that there is recognition and fulfillment that is there, even in the bio order. Yeah. So you will notice some things. Yes, certainly. Now, if a plant is you know, put in the soil, yes, you will notice something simple like when the sun comes up, mm-hmm. the leaves of the uh, plant open up. Yes, ma'am. When the sun goes down, the leaves of the plant close. Yeah. When the sun comes up every day, the plants mm-hmm. start growing towards that direction. Yeah. Towards the direction of the sunlight. Isn't it? Yes, ma'am. This is all what you can see it as recognizing the relationship with the other unit, the sun, mm-hmm. and fulfilling that relationship in a very definite manner it cannot suddenly start deciding to turn the other way when the sun comes up okay this is a very fixed thing are you able to see this yes ma'am yeah so similarly Uh, it cannot choose to do something different this conduct is definite it has always oh. been like this and it continues to be this way. Okay. It? Yes. So they have shown in studies that if there is, you know, soft music and this and that, the plants seem yeah. to be growing better. Or if there is, you know, loud rock music and all of that, then it is, uh, you know, the growth may be hampered or whatever. I am not. Uh, clear about uh, exactly what has been shown in that study but essentially what you're showing is recognition and fulfillment that it is very definite it doesn't change yes but when it comes to the self see in the animal now the self is associated so in the self there is this um assuming Mm -hmm. this has been added on isn't it Now, with that assuming, so if, say, you have a pet dog, we keep giving this example, no? Mm. So, you go and get a dog from outside. Yes, ma'am. Now, you take it it in your house as a pet. So, when that dog comes to the house, um, you may call it by some name, it doesn't respond. But as you keep calling it by that name, it starts responding. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yes, ma'am. That's how you can train the dog. Yes, ma'am. Don't dirty the house. You take the dog outside when the dog has to pass urine or motion or something. And so on. Yes, ma'am. So you can train the dog. Why? Because if the dog assumes something, then the behavior is according to the assumption. So if the dog assumes the relationship with you, it behaves a certain way with you. Yes, so ma'am. when you call, the dog may you know wag the tail and come and so on. But if an outsider comes, the dog may bark at that person. Yes, ma'am. Now you, you know, you are able to you know train the dog to say, okay, this is a person of the house, and this person comes regularly, and so on. Now when the dog keeps seeing that person every day. Now they stop barking. You see? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So that difference, if we see, then we can see that in the material order, there is only recognition and fulfillment. But when it comes to the self, the consciousness, there is assuming in the animals, there is, you know, just largely assuming only. They cannot get to knowing. But Mm. when you as the self evolves and in the human order, you can see that as a human being, the self or consciousness has the potential to know, yes, has ma'am. the potential to understand. 
so you can um, you can have certain acceptances but if those acceptances are based on understanding mm. then your conduct also can be definite that every time you will behave a certain way but right now a lot of times what happens is our acceptances our assumptions are not based on understanding yes, so if we assume if i assume that i have a relationship with my parents but not with my in-laws then my behavior with my parents may be one way and my behavior mm -hmm. with my in-laws may be a different way yes, the same thing my mother says i may respond in a different way the same thing my mother in law says i may respond in a different way i may react yes ma'am if i don't see that relationship so there the assumption is playing but if the assumption is guided or if that acceptance is based on understanding then i'll be able to see my relatedness with all then i will have the same kind of definite behavior with all regardless yeah. of you know all these other differences that i was focusing on earlier can you see that yes ma'am so when we are not aware no we may not be able to pay attention to our thoughts we may hmm. not be able to see our thoughts and feelings at that moment hmm and so it will seem like something just happened automatically so it seems as if you know this happened and maybe the body did it because i am not aware of my own thoughts my feelings at that moment when it happened but lot of times you will notice that when you are uh, when you continue to pay attention mm -hmm. you will be able to notice that feeling changing when we do the exercises that uh, yeah i could feel that uh, change i could see that mm -hmm. my voice is raising and i could uh, Not understand only the also. voice is raising uh, you will be able to notice the disturbance within okay so effect is you know if, if one is what you can see in the body hmm more subtle than that is what you are thinking at that time your thoughts more subtle than that is the feeling at the base of the thought when you are giving some instruction to the body so mm. we are right now seeing what is happening in the body but that more subtle part of what is happening within us when we are not able to see it looks like the body is doing this isn't mm. it mm -hmm. but as we keep paying attention we'll be able to see this whole thought process behind it the feeling behind it and then we'll be able to see that you know i am feeling something i am disturbed within i am already reacting inside and then i express it outside through the body okay so as we keep paying attention we'll be able to see those things within ourselves yeah see what we are saying as life also we may be meaning many different things when we say life so you know that clarity of you know what is um the characteristic of a particular unit if we try to see if we have the potential to understand each and every unit and because there are there are so many units if you try to understand each unit by itself separately it's a long process but if you try to understand um by based on the characteristics then for ease of understanding this uh, classification has been made into four orders certainly this is not the only classification this is one way of trying to understand and in tradition lot of work has been done to try to understand but when you go to express that what you understand now there can be some limitation of words so the same words if i am not able to see that reality for myself i may give one meaning to it but as my um, ability to see that reality grows now i may be able to understand the same word in a different light 
can you uh, uh, sort of relate to what i am saying is it making yeah. sense yeah so so for instance if i give you a small example um when i was in school um we used to hear this you know uh, swami vivekananda's quote arise awake and stop not till your goal is met yeah, yeah. so in eighth standard it may mean to the person that okay my goal is to do my 10th exam so i must keep working till i finish my 10th exam that may be you know what i understand from it at that level now i give a different meaning because now i can relate to it better that what was meant by being awake right and what exactly is the goal so as our understanding grows we the meaning we get out of the words also changes isn't it so ultimately lot of things have been said in tradition but what is the meaning in it really how will i decipher that that i can do only if i try to see that reality within myself isn't it yeah. otherwise how will i know because yeah. i may be giving it a very different meaning so ultimately what we are trying to do is trying to see the reality the way it is within ourselves in that process certainly we can take the help of whatever is there in the tradition we can read about it we can um you know listen to people realized people who are saying things but it doesn't become true for me until and unless i see it myself so this is what we are trying to do and this is one way of doing it there may be many other ways isn't it as it yeah ultimately if you see you know if we are able to see our relatedness with every other human being and with every other unit then we will think of the well being of every other person and every other unit isn't it in addition to our own well being so when we say you know so in so, so many people they came to our country and did this and changed things now if you try to see what is our feeling towards our own uh, people in the country and what is our feeling towards the people who came from outside somewhere we might be seeing our relationship with human beings within our own country we may not be able to see our relationship with somebody coming from another country isn't it but ultimately if i am able to see the reality i may be able to see that every human being has already got a relationship with every other human being and every other unit Yeah. so so to to be able to see that reality within myself that is what ultimately makes the difference isn't it otherwise i am assuming something that somebody said and i can never be sure whether that is truly you know what what i have taken from that is that really the truth is that really the reality or is it just an assumption how do i verify so i have a glimpse of that in the form of the natural acceptance and i can see that this natural acceptance is universal it applies to all so that's how i am getting the glimpse from there and with that as my guide when i keep working i can see that this um, even though you know i may not have reached that potential but i can see slowly that i am making small steps towards that and it is making a difference in my life because i can observe this within myself then i know isn't it yeah. so, um we had thought that we will start with doing the activities of the self trying to understand the self in a little more detail we looked at the self and the body and since the self is the one that is central to my existence as a human being now we'll try to see the activities that are going on within the self so within the self we have 
something that uh, is going on constantly within us is the imagination, isn't it? In this imagination, we have desires. These are associated with some feeling. We have thoughts. We keep thinking about things. And we have some expectation from the outside. All of these three put together is being referred to as the imagination. So this imagination is going on constantly within us. And we've done this in the workshop also. If we can go to the next slide. Yeah, all of this imagination that we are having within us, ultimately, if we, you know, we come to some conclusions, decide something about things, then when we want to express it outside, then we are taking the help of the body. So when I'm interacting with other human beings, I may want to express my feeling, what I'm thinking to the other person. Then I give instruction to the body and I use certain words to express what I am thinking about, what I am feeling. And when I interact with the other person, it is not just the words that I use. I may also instruct my body to say, um, to show my thoughts and feelings in the form of gestures. So I may fold my hands, do a namaste. I may instruct the body to bend down, touch the feet of the other person. I may um, hug the other person and so many things like that. Right? According to whatever instruction I give to the body, the body follows. But ultimately, I am the one who is wanting to express these thoughts, these feelings to the other human being. Similarly, when I'm working with nature, I'm instructing the body to do some task, to do some activity and so on, based on whatever my um, thought process is. So all this we will be uh, doing in more detail tomorrow. We just opened up the topic today since a lot of sharings were there. But we'll do this in uh, some more detail tomorrow. Meanwhile, for today, all of us can try to see this process that is happening within us before we do the activity outside or as we are doing the activity outside. Is it just happening in the body or am I thinking something, feeling something and then giving the instruction to the body. This, if we can try to pay attention for today, then we'll open this up again tomorrow and move from there.